Number 35. A narrow beam of white light enters a prism made of crown glass at a 45 degree incident angle as shown in the figure. At what angles, theta sub r and theta sub v, do the red and violet components of the light emerge from the prism? All right. So first of all, uh, anytime you're given an angle, it's always, well, angle is, they're relative. With respect to what? So I have to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that uh, the angle here that they're talking about when they emerge is going to be relative to the normal at that surface. In other words, the angle I'm calculating here is going to be this angle. Okay, now that might be what they want, that might not be what they want. That would be the standard angle, but, you know, just keep that in mind. That's the angle I'm calculating. No matter what, though, if you had to find this angle inside, you can obviously just subtract it from 90 because we know the normal always makes a perpendicular angle relative to the surface. So, all right. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, why don't we calculate, why don't we take this step by step? Let's do the red one first. Okay, it doesn't really make a difference, but let's do the red one. So um, here's the incident ray, the white light coming on in. And what's going to happen is since now these you know, colors have uh, different now indices of refraction, um, they're going to now be refracted then at different angles relative to one another. All right, and that's kind of why when you see light through a prism, you'll start to see a rainbow of colors on the other side because we're refracting uh, the light. Anyway, um, so why don't we calculate then in the picture, take a look at the picture, guys. Why don't we calculate this angle in here, okay, right in here, this angle of refraction it would be considered, right? It's always relative to the normal. Now, I know this looks a little weird. You're like, might be tilting your head a little bit, right? Um, just here's the flat surface, right? It would be the same thing as if that surface was here. Here's the 45, and then it's bending towards the normal, okay? I'm finding that angle in there. So uh, all we're going to do is standard practice, Snell's Law, right? The index of refraction for the incident ray multiplied by the sine of the angle of the incident ray will equal the index of refraction for the refracted ray multiplied by the sine of the refracted angle. I want to find that refracted angle, so divide out now the index of refraction for the refracted ray, basically that of crown glass. Take the inverse sine of both sides. Oops. Take the inverse sine of both sides. All right. And all we're going to do then is get rid of the sine then, all right, because it cancels it. So now all we need to do basically is just plug in the numbers, okay? So inverse sine of now uh, the incident index, it's in error, so that's a one. The sine then of the incident ray is 45 degrees. And then divide that now by the index of refraction of red light in crown glass, you gotta look that up on your table, that's gonna be 1.512, okay? That's equal to now the index of refraction. So let's do it, okay? So now here we're gonna get, uh, so this is gonna be inverse sine of now sine of 45 divided then by 1.512. All right, so 27.88 degrees or so. All right, now why don't we do that for the purple? Because the purple now in the picture, right, is gonna be the same thing basically. It's gonna be a little smaller though, all right, but it's the same calculation. The only difference is cancel this value at the bottom and write in 1.530. We already have the work set up, so let's just do it. So let's do inverse sine of sine of 45 divided then by 1.530. So this is 27 point now five. 27 point, I guess five three if you want, it doesn't matter. All right, so these are now uh, the two values, the, the, uh, the refracted angles, okay? Now, here's the thing. All right, let's take this maybe, see if we can move this out of the way. All right, so now, Let's clean this picture up a little bit. So now what we just found, focus on the picture. So what we just found is this angle in here, right? For the red one. We found, so let's deal with the red. We found that's 27.88. Let me ask you a question. Could we find this angle now? Sure we could, right? You know that this makes a 90 degree angle. And therefore I can just simply take 90 and subtract it by that number. So let's do that. Let's do 90 now minus that red angle's value. And we find in here now that this angle in here is going to be 62.12 degrees about, right? The angle in here is now going to be 62.12 degrees. Now, look at this thing that's created. Look, what's created? Well, that, that didn't go as planned. It There's a triangle. Wait a minute, and if you know this is a prism that's an equilateral triangle basically, meaning all the angles are 60, do you know how to calculate now this side of that triangle, meaning this angle? You're saying to yourself, yes, I can, I can, because we know that all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180, no matter what 
darn triangle it is. Isosceles, scalene, equilateral, who cares? All right. So all the angles add up to 180. You know two of them. How do you find the third? Just simply take then the 180, subtract out now the two values, okay? And subtract out then the 60. And we're left with about 57.88 degrees, right? So the angle now in here, uh, now we finally, so to speak, traverse the prism, right? Now we got to the other side. So this is 57.88 now degrees, okay? All right, now. When we now look at the problem here on the right-hand side, remember that I said we're going to be... So let me draw my normal, okay? Let me draw my normal. So now, what I'm going to be calculating here is this angle right in here, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I'm going to be calculating that angle. That we're calling theta sub r, okay? That's what we're calling theta sub r. Now, in order to know, this is basically the refractive. I'll consider this now the red line here, the red light ray to be the new incident ray, and now this is the new refracted ray. So essentially what we're going to do again is we're going to do Snell's Law. Okay, we're going to do Snell's Law again. And we're literally going to come to the same conclusion again. Okay, this refracted ray now is going to be for the red light. Okay, and it's going to calculate this angle in here. In order for me to do that, though, I need to know the index of refraction for the incident ray. Now, that's traveling through crown glass before it reaches this boundary, right? So the, this is not a 1 up here anymore. It's now going to be a 1.512. So let's plug that in. 1.512, okay? Is the incident ray now, uh, this red line, at a 45-degree angle relative to the normal? No, it's not. Is it at a 57.88? degree angle? No, it's not, right? Because this, look at the picture, the angle in here is the angle we need, right? That's the angle with respect to the normal. That's the incident angle. So how do you find that if you know this normal always creates a 90 degree angle at all sides? Oh, right. You can just take 90 and subtract that value, right? You see that? So to get that value in there, the incident angle now, simply take 90 and subtract that value from it. So this is 32.12. So 32.12, right? And now you might notice a, take a look. What do you notice about these two numbers if you look back in the calculator? Well, it's half, right? Hmm, hmm, that's like exactly half. Usually when you see things like that, they're not coincidences, right? Maybe you want to investigate why that is, okay? But in any case, I now know the angle. It's not sine of 45 anymore. It's going to be sine of now 32.12. So I'm going to expand on this a little bit. Let me erase the bottom. Okay. Let's just erase some of this stuff. All right. So this is now 32.12. And then that's going to be then divided by the index of refraction for the refractive rate. Well, this is back to air, so that's 1. And notice this is going to tell me my now theta sub, I'll call it capital R. So all we're going to do now is we're going to plug that into the calculator, okay? So inverse sine of 1.512 times then sine of that exact answer, then divided by 1. Well, we don't really need. i got to put it in now since I, okay. And then hit enter. So 53.5. Interesting. 53.5 degrees, okay? That is now the relative angle to the uh, normal. Now, we're going to do the same analysis, basically, except a couple things are going to change now for the uh, purple one, okay? So you can erase all this stuff. So now we know about the purple, okay? So the purple one in here that was a little smaller is 27.53. So now here's the triangle. I'm going to create a purple triangle, okay? Here's now the triangle. So this angle in here then must be 90 minus this 27.53, okay? 27, so 90 minus... I'm going to get that exact value from before, 27.53, okay? And that's going to be about 62.47, all right? So this angle in here is going to be 62.47. We realize it's also a triangle, so this angle over here must be, again, it must be then 180 minus 60 minus then that 62.47. And we get now 57.53, okay? So let's clean this up a little bit. So we're finding now that this is going to be right in here. This is going to be 57.53 degrees. Now, the normal. Where's the normal? Well, the normal is now at the point of articulation between the two. OK, 
Okay. So if now this angle, remember, this is not the incident angle. Okay. I need to find the that angle between the normal and then that light ray. So how do I find this? Again, you're going to take 90 and subtract it, right? 90 minus and that 57.53, blah, blah, blah. And what do you get? You get 32, okay? Right? Point what? 0.43, excuse me, 0.4733333, right? All right, so let's write that on in. So this is then going to be 32. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong function. Okay, so this is then going to be 32. 32.47. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to now my new incident ray. It's not 32.12, it's now 32.47. No longer, by the way, is it the one point, because that's the wrong index. We need the 1.53. Okay, 1.530. And then all we now need to do is just calculate it, right? So now this is going to be inverse sine. Oh, let's get this. So inverse sine of 1.53 times then the sine of that value. And we get about 55, so here's theta sub V now. So 55.23, so I guess two or so, right? depending upon how many sig figs you want. And that's that, guys. All right, again, the angle I found over here is this little tiny angle in that picture, all right? So hopefully that makes, uh, hopefully that makes sense, all right? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please, if you can, help us out and subscribe if you're able. And, oh, by the way, no, that's not the angle I found. I found this bigger angle. Sorry. It's always in reference to the normal. <laughs> Tried to confuse you. So, guys, thanks. Anyway, um, hope this helps, and I will see you in the next one. All right? Take care.